Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. I'm pleased to welcome to this broadcast, Michael New City. Michael is the Chief Innovation Officer and President of ArcBest Technologies. He's been with ArcBest since 1993 and held a range of roles, including a Director of Economic Analysis, a Chief Financial Officer, a CFO and CIO at the same time prior to taking on his current set of responsibilities in early 2015. ArcBest is a logistics and supply chain company based in Fort Smith, Arkansas, with a bit more than $3 billion in annual revenue. Uh, Michael, it's great to see you today. Thank you so much for joining me on Technovation. Thanks, Peter. It's great to be here. That's my, my pleasure. Well, let's begin with a uh, description. I, I offered a description in brief of ArcBest. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the about ArcBest and also the part of ArcBest, uh, ArcBest Technologies, that you're the president of. Um, talk, talk a little bit about the, the two sides of, of, of the house, if you would. Yeah, sure, Peter. So ArcBest, you know, we're, we're as you said, we're in the logistics and transfer, freight transportation space. And our focus is really on trying to make it easier for our customers to do business. We we combine uh, reliable shipping capacity with technology, uh, with trusted advisor relationships to take the complexity out of the supply chain. Um, one thing that you'll hear about our organization is that we're we're very values driven, and it's at the core of who we are, um, who we hire, uh, how we work, um, and so I. As, I, as you said, I serve as the Chief Innovation Officer for ArcBest and the President of ArcBest Technologies, which is a, a wholly owned uh, technology subsidiary of ArcBest. Um, the innovation role is really focused on uh, transformative innovation in the organization with a five to seven year horizon. Uh, the role is new to ArcBest as of 2015. And I feel like the work that's uh, linked to it is just now coming online. And so I'm very excited about what's happening in that area. Um, ArcBest Technologies is nearing uh, just under 500 tech and analytical professionals. Um, it's focused on the traditional information technology function, as well as data science, um, operation science. Uh, we have an engineering group that's focused on research and development around the operational elements of, of uh, freight operations. And so it's really a great group of highly engaged and, and creative employees who really understand technology as well as the freight transportation and logistics business. That's a great overview. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. You mentioned that as chief innovation officer, a role that was new uh, six years ago when you took on the post, a little more than that even, um, focuses on transformative innovation. Can you provide some examples of what uh, constitutes transformative innovation in your world? Absolutely. So when we think about uh, transformative information innovation, we're, we're talking about things that might bring net new revenue, things that might bring a significant operational uh, enhancements to the organization. Um, you know, one example of that is around CX. Um, last year, we implemented uh, what we call a dynamic LTL pricing uh, program. It provides uh, our shippers with faster, simpler, more accurate pricing without negotiating a, a published price which is very typical and traditional in the less than truckload industry, but it also has a positive environmental impact by reducing what we call empty miles or the number of miles that we're moving empty or near empty equipment for repositioning purposes. Uh, dynamic pricing uses machine learning to predict current market prices and then ultimately provides a, a, a much simpler process that's tailored to each uh, customer um, it allows ArcBest to, to capitalize on our existing asset-based uh, LTL network availability and then the market insights so we can offer um, a, a, the right price on every quote at that right and the right time. Um, and the program also allows new customers to be on, onboarded more quickly, which is part of that, that uh, flexibility aspect. So that's just one data-driven example of how I view uh, transformative innovation in the organization. And talk a bit about the team that you lead or the teams that you lead, uh, perhaps on the two sides of, of uh, your set of responsibilities. H how are each organized, please? So, yeah, that's a great question. So when I came into the role um, and really started planning for the role when I was um, CFO and CIO, uh, I was working with the leadership team at ArcBest Technologies, trying to think about how to re-envision uh, that organization and one challenge that we saw, and this is this is probably typical in other larger 
um, IT organizations is that you have a single CIO that is uh, very responsible for the kind of the end-to-end -end, uh, information technology spectrum. And we really felt like we wanted to kind of break that apart and have, um, so our CIO uh, who reports up to me is focused on uh, systems and software development. All of the software and systems that our employees use and that our customers use. Uh, there's a PMO that's under that individual as well. And then the, our CTO is focused more on the traditional infrastructure, uh, cybersecurity, uh, help desk, um, technical services roles in the organization. And they speak to the, that person speaks to the board once a year on cybersecurity topics, does a quarterly report on cybersecurity topics for the organization. So those, that's how we kind of split up the traditional information technology role. And then we rolled in the economic analysis group, um, which is a group of, of, uh, of folks that have masters and PhDs and, and uh, uh, math or other related uh, uh, areas. And that forms our data science group. Um, and then the last group is our R&D group. And these are folks that are engineers, uh, master's level, PhD level engineers, and they're focused on the physical devicing around supply chain technologies, things like uh, when we get into things like RFID or IoT or tablets or freight moving devices. Um, and so they progress that, that function for the company. Very dynamic. And, and um, how is the team is most of the team in Fort Smith where you are today and where the firm is headquartered or do you, is it distributed across multiple parts of the parts of the country or world? So that's a great question, Peter. So one of the things that we did coming into uh, the changes in 2015 is, uh, you know, our history is really about developing 90, most of the software we developed in-house, 95% of that software in-house. And we realized that we didn't need to do that anymore, um, that we, we wanted to maintain a, a high level of customization in the software development, have a capacity to do that. But we also realized that we needed to source externally. We needed to create more variable capacity in the organization across all those areas I just mentioned. And so um, for folks that do work um, directly for ArcBest, um, we have an office, our main headquarters for ArcBest Technologies in Fort Smith. We have two other offices, one in Plano and one in Medina, Ohio, through acquisitions. It's much smaller groups, very vital to the organization. And then we've got um, probably on the range of about another 100, 125 uh, employees that are contractual through different relationships in there. As you can imagine, they're, they're spread across the globe. Very interesting. I couldn't help notice that when you were describing the uh, the roles that roll up to you, uh, economic analysis, you used to be a director of that. Uh, information right. technology, you used to be the CIO. Uh, you are the first person uh, to hold this uh, set of responsibilities, as you noted. Uh, to what extent was your past experience in these other roles? Uh, did it sort of bring you, bring you the perspective that there was value in bringing all this together to, to have it uh, work perhaps in a more concerted effort than, than it had traditionally been the case? You know, I think one of the things that, that really I got seasoned on, well, I'll speak of that from two perspectives, one from the finance, the CFO role perspective, and one from the director of economic analysis role. Um, I've always felt that that a, a strong source of our, our IP, our uh, competitive advantages could come through how we understand and use data. That, that, that really got ingrained in me uh, you know, 15, 15 years ago. And so I, I really wanted that to be a much stronger component of the organization. And, and really when we, when we rolled in the economic analysis group uh, into ArcBest Technologies five years ago, the group was 20, you know, 18 to 20 people. Today, that group is, is a, over 100 people, 50 direct employees, and 50 um, that we work with through partners, um, through one primary partner um, in sourcing that talent. And so that's been a, a phenomenal uh, change because really the, their, their work product is being absorbed by 
all the other areas across the traditional information technology groups, across R&D. So that's been a very strong um, ad. The other thing I'd say on the CFO role is I really wanted to change the way we looked at the technology budget. I wanted to bifurcate it. And, and so today, the view is that we have a very strong view, a very good view of how much of our tech spend is, is what we call just run the business, keep the lights on spend. And, um, and then how much of it is going toward, uh, you know, systems development, R&D and other things. And I wanted to, treat, wanted to treat that budget like a portfolio and have it very tightly aligned to our strategy and to the initiatives of the company. And we've been very successful on that. And so when you look at that, that spend, which is about 45% of our total tech spend, it's aligned to every initiative on our strategy map. It's got a um, ROI a component hypothesis. It's got project management resources. It's got executive sponsorship, tactical leadership assigned. And, and, and we evaluate all of those through, a, through an investment committee that meets uh, on a regular basis to understand that portfolio of investments and how they're, how they're trending and how they're paying off and how they're progressing. And so when I think about ArcBest Technologies, it's, it's, yes, one part infrastructure run the business, but it's very much uh, a portfolio of technology investments. Very interesting. And if I'm doing my math correctly, if uh, 45% of the portfolio is on these transformative aspects, the systems developments, the R&D and so forth, it would mean that the run the business, the other part of the uh, of the dichotomy that you set up is 55%. And that's a very healthy percentage that is focused on the new things, uh, developing the new. I I'm curious, as somebody who has run technology for some time, what are some of the methods that you use in order to decrease the uh, percentage of spend on run the business in order to provide you the flexibility and capability to focus so much of your attention and ultimately your budget on, on new innovative things? You know, I think, you know, coming into the role, I didn't know how that played out. We did not have the benchmarks in 2015. We did not have the benchmarks to really understand where we sat. We, we used an outside uh, consultant to help us understand how those run, those various run the business metrics, those benchmarks, um, lined out because I was very convinced that if we could show the business that our run the business spend across you know various metrics was in place you know either you know at or below industry benchmark benchmarks that gave them that gave them a reason to stop kind of focusing on that element and focusing more on the investment pool and that's exactly what happened we weren't starving those areas but we came into the right place that was that at or below the benchmarks. And I have to be honest, Peter, I didn't have anything to do with that. That really predates me in the role. We had a team um, of technologists that, you know, average 10 year, 13 to 15 years with the company. Um, there's been a discipline on cost control uh, for many years, uh, back when ArcBest Technologies was formed in the 1960s. You know, when you're when you're when you're working in a in a kind of a lower margin business that has that kind of effect on these other areas, and so we just you know today when you look at our um, infrastructure, it's it's a very pragmatic perspective. We 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 look at things on on prem versus cloud. It's really just the best technology for the price for the function. We don't get caught up in the the hype. Of emerging tech, um, we evaluate it carefully. It doesn't mean we ignore it. We don't ignore it, and so we want to understand it. But we also don't run to things when we don't understand the full potential and the value of it. So I'd say we're in a really good place from an infrastructure perspective. And some folks might come in and say, "Well, you're a bit outdated over here or there," and we'd say it's just part of the whole infrastructure, and it works for the business. I, I'm struck, uh, Michael, not just this conversation, but our, our, our prior ones as well, at how progressive this business seems to be in terms of its use of technology. You, you talked about how the sanctity of data was something that was burned in your brain years ago. And there are many organizations that are much more recently come to that conclusion and may, maybe don't even yet have a data strategy in place. So new is that discipline in a lot of organizations. As you mentioned, for, for years now, even predating your time in technology, 
uh, clearly had a progressive point of view of making sure that as you were developing your technology, it's not growing or ballooning to a point where it, it dominates the run the business aspects of technology dominate to such an extent to decrease the flexibility you have uh, to focus on the new and do new things for your company, for your company's customers and so forth. Um, you know, I, I wonder if you could take a moment to reflect uh, the extent to which there are some insights that you can share on how this, uh, the orientation of this organization to be so progressive in its thought process around technology. Yeah. You know, on the data side, it's been, it's, it's, it's interesting. It takes me back. I, th- I remember back in 2003, it was back when the KPI dashboard was a big thing. And we'd rolled out a KPI dashboard and it had, you know, key performance indicators had, had 15 and then it grew to 20 and then it grew to like 500. And we realized it became a kind of an all performance indicators dashboard. And we, we needed a different technology infrastructure for that. And I had to go, I was a director at the time. I wasn't even an officer in the company, but I had to go out and sell this concept of, because uh, of having a centralized resource for dashboarding, for, for reporting, um, for data. And what we, you know, back then data was very siloed. Um, You had every department that was kind of doing their own thing around data and and reporting and i had to convince them let's let's hold off on that let's pool resources let's go to a common platform and 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 the vision also was that we could have something that was um usable not only for the officers not only for the management team but they could be on the same platform that a a supervisor on a on a freight dock could be in looking at his or her metrics. We wanted something that could work up and down the whole organization. And at the time, there weren't vendors in the market to support that kind of vision. Um, we didn't want to have people worrying about inner and outer joins uh, that weren't working in IT to, to manage their data within such a, a reporting framework. And, and so we did. We, we spent three years and we, we, we completely redid the data architecture for the organization and then redid the front end and built our own BI platform uh, for the company. It's still in place today. Um, we do have other products that we've we've added on uh, since then, knowing that we're that's not our our core competency. But what I think that did, though, Peter, is that the takeaway is this: we've been successful in being able to sell these concepts, uh, these end-to-end concepts, these game-changing concepts to the functional side, the business side. Um, and cast that vision, and they've been participants in that process. And so I think that's key in, as you're trying to progress these kind of initiatives. I think it's a very interesting perspective. I appreciate you sharing those. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I also wanted to ask you, as I alluded to earlier, you've had, you know, I, I, prior to the recording, I was joking that there are some people who have the same job in many different companies. Uh, you've had many jobs in the same company, and I reeled off some of the most recent anyway. And gosh, what an interesting set of of chief roles you've had from chief financial officer to to CFO and CIO together. I remember joking the first time we ever met when you had those two roles that the CFO is usually the bane of the existence of the CIO and you were the same person for a little yeah. while. Jack <laughs> I could, could only, exactly. I could only imagine you were frustrating yourself perhaps, but uh, yeah. and now chief innovation officer, president of ArcBest Technologies, as we've been talking about. Talk, I, I would love to understand, I know you've got a tech, technical background from your undergraduate days. You also have an MBA, which no doubt built business acumen. You also have meandered, and I mean that in a great way, meandered across this organization into different disciplines, really expanding your aperture of responsibilities, no doubt understanding of how value is created across this organization. I wonder if you can reflect on this really uh, remarkable and unusual uh, career path that you've had. Yeah, sure. That's a thank, thanks for the question, Peter. I, I I do like reflecting on that. Um, you know, I, I I started off in the organization really on the customer side as a just as a programmer back in 1993, and we were working with software-based technologies uh, on a disk uh, for customers to be able to to track freight and and do other things. And that really, uh, you know, what that led to was. Uh, me being able to, to kind of lead our e-commerce initiative back in the mid to late 1990s. And that really opened up my eyes to 
because at the time, what was happening there was uh, most organizations were focused on on transferring their their marketing materials. They just viewed the web as a as a new marketing resource for uh, transferring printed materials online. And our organization had this vision of of let's bypass that that step and go straight to allowing customers to use these internal, even green tube type systems um, to track freight and create bills of lading and and do rate quotes and many other things. And and we'll we'll put a web front end on these technologies. We had to write custom uh, piping to get that to work with a mainframe. And and so, but it it really opened my eyes to a number of things. It opened my eyes to uh, our customers uh, in the industry. It opened my eyes to the fact that we didn't have to rely on just off the shelf systems to to innovate and do things we could we could we could we could bypass some steps. The data side was very fascinating to me. And that really moved me into that next role, which was in economic analysis, where I led that group. Um, we uh, that group had its own uh, pioneering days when when the industry deregulated in the 1980s. I wasn't involved then, of course, but they had they adopted activity based costing, very data driven approach. It was new, but we needed something as the industry was deregulated. Um, I got to be a part of that. Uh, when I when I took over the area uh, in the 2000s, and um, and so very related to the finance function as well, uh, that activity based costing group did a lot of ad hoc analysis in that group. We um, did a lot of analysis for for the executive team, kind of an, almost like an internal uh, management consulting group doing a lot of an- analytics, and I got an MBA along the way. Um, while I was in that group. And then when Judy McReynolds became the uh, president and CEO, CEO in 2010, she was the previous CFO. She was a traditional CFO. Um, she, we were in a situation where we had, we had just come through the Great Recession in 2010. Uh, we'd lost quite a bit of money. And we realized that we needed a different strategy for the company. And, and she asked me if I wanted to do the CFO role as a non-traditional CFO, but really focused on the strategy for the company and, and diversification for the company. Um, I had, I'd had the background uh, with customer work and e-commerce. I'd had the background with, uh, with uh, economic analysis and its connections to finance and, so, um, and data. And so that was an exciting time. And we, we, we worked through that for four or five years. At the same time in the organization, there was a, a growing concern about how we were managing technology. We knew we wanted more out of technology. We, we'd made some good, a lot of good technology advancements throughout the years, but it really wasn't being what I would say being managed in a modern way. And so I took the CFO, CFO and CIO hat on, as you said, and it was a challenge. And we we realized um, very quickly that uh, that it was probably too much, and just the needs of the CFO, the needs of the CIO, and uh, we kind of had a conversation. Judy had a conversation uh, uh, in the in toward the end of 2014, and said, "Hey, what do you want to do?" And I said, "Let's." We worked with an outside consultant, and and we said, let's focus on innovation. Let's let's rethink ArcBest technologies uh, completely as a as an innovation uh, arm for the organization. We'll bring IT together with data, with R and D, um, with operation science, and uh, and we'll we'll treat it like a like a portfolio of investments and align it to the strategy. And so. Um, that was that's kind of the the course, Peter. That's fantastic. And can I ask you again? I made the joke, though I still find it interesting. CFO and CIO. There have been a number of combinations. I'll talk on the CIO side, which is a discipline I know particularly well. There have been a number of things that have been combined with that. Chief innovation officer, in fact, shared services of various kinds. Um, you know, chief technology officer, digital officer, data officer added on to the CIO set of responsibilities. Right. As I mentioned, CFO has so, you know, though though less so today, for a long time, it was the primary 
uh, kind of boss of the CIO. And I wonder if having grown up with a bit more of a financial background, a technical background as well, but having been most recently uh, and even previously, quote unquote, just the CFO, how that oriented you differently in taking on the CIO role? Yeah, I think from my perspective, you know, what I was really trying to, you know, that whole year being CFO and CIO, I really took an exploratory role as CIO. Um, you know, ArcBest Technologies had had a president um, and he reported up to me in that process. And so it was being, being run as an organization. And so I took an exploratory role, you know, or, or, or uh, you know, that's how I treated that position. And, you know, we've got, I, I'd say one thing here is that might have been threatening to, to the leadership team at ArcBest Technologies, and it wasn't. We've got a very strong culture in this organization of working together, working through issues, uh, uh, being on a team together. I've been here for 27 years, and I've known many of these people that uh, that I was leading for, for a, a, you know, a long time. And, um, and so that those relationships really helped us work through that. And I learned a lot this year, that year, and they were telling me things that they wanted to do as well, that, uh, that maybe never had uh, the right person in place to, to get that off the, the tarmac. Um, and, and so that was a great year to rethink how we could do technology. And, and it was, a in, you know, Toward the end of the year, putting that all together and seeing the the, the roadmap, we really we really planned out a roadmap that was probably three a three to five year roadmap for ArcBest Technologies, and then we began executing on that when I came over in a full time capacity. Very interesting. Well, as you look to the future, Michael, um, what trends excite you? You've talked about a number of them. You referenced uh, the the sanctity of data, the importance of that. You, you alluded to IoT is an important part of the, the future transformation ahead towards digital yeah. and continuing to innovate around digital technologies. Um, you know, what, what, whether it's a further explanation of some of those or, or additional to- topics that are of particular interest to you, what are some of those trends that excite yeah. you as you look to the future? Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about um, those technologies, I think, related to, to the industry that I'm in. But I, I like to look at, I mean, we tend to talk about these things kind of in, in pieces, and I like to think of, the, of them as more of a more of an ecosystem of technologies. You know, um, my industry, the supply chain industry, freight, logistics, transportation has a, has many opportunities. But um, but just like many other industries, the technology uh, is really enhancing a lot of the workflows, um, and has been in, in enhancing those workflows for decades. Are any industry that's focused on the the, the movement of goods, the manufacturing of goods um, really is workflow driven. Um, and so, um, you know, for many companies, you've got past technology solutions that are uh, now yielding this wealth of data. It's informing strategic direction uh, for many of the operating units. Um, then you start rolling in things like I- IoT devices. Well, those are enhancing workflows and touch points with real time analytics and, and data that previously wasn't available or was cost prohibitive to capture. Then you've got recent advancements in AI and machine learning, and those are impacting daily operations. And then I think about things like quantum that will continue to revolutionize our industry by making you know, previously unsolvable problems solvable. We've actually got uh, algorithms that we've developed that, that we're, we're waiting uh, to, to run on that type of technology um, it takes days or months to run. And so we're, we're looking forward to be able to use those type of technologies. So, you know, my view is that there's an array of technologies out there that are emerging. You've got to understand them, where they fit. But really, the other view that we have is that we know that every the technology is going to be a part of every innovative solution today. And, and the failure to embrace innovation it's going to leave companies vulnerable to, to disruptions that are that we view would be devastating, and the supply chain industry is no different. You know, innovation and technology, in our views, aren't just key to navigating the supply chain, logistics, uh, transportation. It's a key to surviving and thriving in it. So, I don't want to point to any particular technology. I'd say we've got people looking at 
um, a lot of them, if not all of the ones that are really related to our industry. Well, Michael, I, I really appreciate you sharing perspectives from the remarkable career you've had over uh, 27 years now at ArcBest, the various roles that you've had, your current purview, again, a, a fascinating uh, slice of the company that you're responsible for, a company that's been enorm- remarkably successful, a stock that's opened more than 200% just in the past year alone. So certainly the market would, would uh, offer positive feedback for the direction you and the team have, have, uh, have put forward. But I really do appreciate you sharing your perspectives and, and thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Really enjoyed speaking with you.